take them off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I love like that. You know, I can wear my pants. Reasons other than daylight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But at church, I know to be respectful for my, my 60s and older. They would just concentrate on that and not hear nothing else that comes out of my mind. Yeah. So when you say when Christians have fun, we do need different environments to where we can, where we can get loose. You know, I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see more coffee shop talk, Bible studies, yeah. and conversations, more podcasts concerning the culture and who we are as people because. Uh, this is a, a large percentage of our lives, but it's not. It's just a small. It's a small percentage in the grand scheme of things. And we need to show more of who we are as people to, to raise our lives. Amen. I, I really hope that people receive me. I'm known for praise and worship, but if you look at my set, it wasn't really praise and worship. You know it was what I'm saying? For that but, but for that atmosphere, I want to do what was required. But, you know, Paul said it best: come all things to all, all people. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to try to do. Sister Ashley, where you serving? Uh, well Springs Christian Center. Woo! Okay. Yes. That's what's up. You're crazy, aren't you? Uh, yes, crazy. I am. Yeah. Yeah. With Kingpin, we already know where you are. Living Faith Cathedral. Shout out to my Bishop Daryl Doris, Pastor Rashonda Doris. Love y'all. Thank y'all for always freeing me to be able to go and lead in the community and do things around the church. Amen, amen. What's going on, Bishop? June, where you at? Where you serving? Shout out to It's different. Yeah, it's very different. I, I think the world, uh, one thing I, I took a son of the pastor, he was concerned about his club, and I said, listen, Satan can't create, right? He, he imitates, he imitates. And the scripture says that the world is God's and the, the fullness there are all things in it, all made through Christ, all made for Christ. Am I spin that right? Amen. So that means this belongs to the Lord. Fellowship, but a club is a social construct for fellowship to take place. Now Satan can take that and distort it. But the ideal of fellowship is a God ideal. Satan did not create. God gave us the need for fellowship. It's one of the five minutes of the church. It's ministry, worship, evangelism, discipleship, and fellowship. We must fellowship. It's part of what we have to do. Um, we grow warmer through fellowship. And so I, I, I said what happened is when we push something out of the church, the enemy can take it, distort it. We look at the distorted version and say, we'll never do that. But that it originally belonged to the Lord. So when rap hit the church, rock hits the church, we pushed it out. That's God. So now we got Christian rap, Christian rock, and we're always behind the cuss comes, you know, coming back. But for the first time, I feel like we are ahead of the game. We can be the head and not the tail. Instead of pushing Kirk Franklin out only for 20 years. I told my pastor, I said, if you push it out, the pastor you're gonna hand the baton to is gonna bring it in. Mm. Your elders are gonna die and go to heaven. The next generation, they're gonna bring skinny jeans in. It's, 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 it's happening. Start, like it whether you like it or not, there'll be a Starbucks, there'll be a, a cash app. Yeah. It, it's gonna come in in this generation or the next. So you could either be a, on, a, a buck, a, ahead of the curve. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I would say too, like, I think the idea of club bothers people in the church. Mind you, a lot of people that are talking about the club in the church ain't been to the club in 20 years. Like, Amen. maybe longer than that. Like, like just, let's be honest about it. Preach. Like, you know, I ain't been to the club in a long time. Preach. Keep it real, I ain't been to the club in a long time. Been like, but the Preach. idea of club is just something that is is disruptive to the normal flow of things. So when you say club, you, if I'm being honest, if when we say club and when we, when we talk about the world and the church looking like the world, when you say club, because it reminds you of what you used to do. Wow. wow. But we're being honest. So yeah, that's why there is something that's, there's a uh, there's a reluctancy to embrace that. But what I saw the night of Light Club AB, it didn't feel like any club I've been to. Wow. No, it didn't feel like that. Again, I, like, I know that that was the concern going in was, it being received like well we shouldn't be making the church look like the world but that's not what that felt like to no, me. Not at all. I, felt, I saw artists i saw dancers i saw singers i saw people having a good time the dj was rocking playing all 
Christian music. And it was fun. That's what I saw. It didn't feel like, um, you know, I ain't even gonna start naming clubs. We not yeah. even <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is it didn't it didn't feel like what your average person would think the, the club is. It didn't feel like that. I've been to a lot of clubs in my lifetime. I ain't ashamed to say it. Yeah. That's what it is. But our very purpose is to go back into those environments and draw people in. Right. Now, if you're not prepared to do that, that's a different. It's a different situation. Yeah. Right? And Amen. that's you know, you may just you may just not be ready for that. You know what yeah. I mean? There's certain things that I came out of that if I go back into those environments, it's like okay, maybe you wasn't ready for this. Let's Amen. let's back up. Let's stay away from that. Everybody's thing is different. Yeah. But when it came to this, I just saw people who love God having a good time together. I didn't see. It, it wasn't nothing that looked like something that we wouldn't or that we would be afraid to put on display in any church. I think Man, everybody had a deep. good time. Wow, that's wow, deep. Wow, that's deep. You know, we got to give him a vision. He said, John, he was just, um, the, the dominating force in creative expression. He said, I didn't call you to partake and take over. And I was going to change the name. We were getting black about it. I said, don't change it because we're going to take something back. Take it back. Yeah. You know, in 10 years, this will be the norm. Yeah. This will be the new norm. When, you're, when your kid thinks of the club, they'll think of Christianity. So it'll be clubs and secular clubs versus clubs and Christian clubs. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? It'll be God stuff and everything else. Um, Sister Manley, is there, where is the, the, the line between being innovative as a body of Christ and mirroring the world? Where's the line between we can be innovative and creative and create new platforms for artists and for youths and for churches to come together in the city Where's that line between now you're being like the enemy? Is there a line? And can, can we hit that line? Can we just define that line? I mean, I think there are always lines, but at the end of the day, creativity came from God. So wow. innovation is something that he's given us. I believe it's a gift that he wants us to use to build the kingdom. Wow. And so whenever you're doing something like, for example, Light Club, where you're bringing the light to the club, you're bringing the light to different people, yeah. um, the goal is to again build the kingdom um but also you're doing it in a way where it's not like you're trying to be like the world but you're showing people like you can be in the world and still have a good time that's right you can be in the world and still have an opportunity to know more about the creator of the world mm. and so that's why i say like of course people will be mad when it's something that's new because no one likes change no one likes something that's unfamiliar yeah. and no one likes something that sounds like what everyone else is doing but when you're taking something back, you're saying, this is what it is, and I'm going to purify this. Wow. So I know on the street, it looks like this. I know that when you go down here, it looks like this. But here, we're purifying the club. Yeah. And when people come, they're going to have an encounter. So the difference between the club and the world is when you go home, you may feel tipsy, you may feel high, whatever that may be. But in the club of light, you're going to go home, go home uplifted. Yeah. You're going to go home saying, you know what? I want to know more about what they were rapping about. Yeah. I want to know more about what they were singing about. Wow. And so that's what I love about it, is that you're opening up the door to give people a chance to say, you know what? I choose to come here. No one's making you come here. And when you do that, you're opening up yourself to saying, you know what? I want a better experience. I want a better life. Wow. And so I feel like the Light Club opens the door for that. So that's why. It, it was like, it would be like if I kidnapped your son and you said, give me my son back and, and people accuse you of like stealing something you're not stealing it's yours. It's your, it's yours it was yours from the get i took it you're just taking back what yes. belonged to you yes. and honestly you let me hold on to way too long, too long. you should have took it back a long time ago honestly yeah. because now it's so still and now to the world it looks like it's i've had it, your son so long wow. people think that that's my my, my wow. kid and then you come in and get your kid back and they're going, you're being like John. No, you're not taking my son from me. You're right. taking your son back, back. back that I never should have been able to take right. in, the first, in the first place. Come on. And now it takes more work to build it up because you can have that son for so long. So that's why it's so hard for believers to build something innovative. Yeah. Because we didn't have it for so long. Now you got to rebuild. You literally, more think, work. You literally think it's the enemy, right? right. But then when, you, when you do something big, like oh, we're going to do a Christian club, we're going to do a club. That's like the world. No, that was his right. from place. jump. Come Rock on. was always when, yeah. when Rock hit, when Rock hit the, when music when instruments hit the church during the Civil War. There was a debate on should instruments be in the church? Should women play the flute? Should there be electric guitars? That sounds like the world. That right. sounds like uh, ACDC. We don't have instruments. No, they belong to us. Right. Right. 
but when we put it out, the enemy distorts it, and now we get the distorted version that we don't want to be like. Wow. So I think we have, I think this is necessary because we have to disband and disbar yeah. the image that Satan has any claim over anything in the yeah. earth. It literally all belongs to God. And I think that's why he won't let me change the name. Yeah. Um, are we afraid to change you, Six? A Christians of believers. I think certain people are afraid of certain kinds of change depending on you know again, this is there's this you know, there is this 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 mindset I believe that sometimes Christians have to where maybe you know they're so afraid of again, like you mentioned, looking like God or looking like certain certain that may be considered to be, you know, again, Satan's taken over and made it look made it look ugly. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking at a change, if it seems different or if it seems out of pocket without study, without research, without you know yeah. discernment, looking at God's word, then the immediate thing is that's what um, wow, there are changes that should not take place. Let, let's, let me not, you know, let's not you know, everything that involves you know, like, in my, in my mind, 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 scriptures come in and, and we can determine it by just just uh, uh, I don't want to be all extra scripture heavy but I am who I am if okay. okay. any man be in Christ he's a new creature okay. old things are passed away behold all things become new here's my thing when it's placed in my hands I'm in Christ I'm creating something new I have dominion I have authority 
There's nowhere I can't go. Come on, dog. I can walk up into a plans meeting and, and, and prophesy, testify, and minister with the authority that I've been given from God. I can go to a secular club right. I can and go turn anywhere. Up. It's, right. it's, I'm not here. This environment, I don't have to worry about my life being taken. In this environment, I don't have to worry about the you know security. not being able to breathe or or the ganja smoke everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But if God tells me to do that, when you ask if God tells you to do something that seems to be a little uh, hypocritical than what you already know, the key is obedience because God told Noah, I'm about to destroy the world. I create, God created the world. <laughs> I'm about to mess up something I created. I'm about to destroy something I created. He told, he told the disciples in Jerusalem, don't leave Israel. Right. In, the, in the book of Acts, he said, get out of Jerusalem. Right. Little two different Peter struggled because yeah. the last note was don't leave Jerusalem. So the question is, is God in control or is he or is he not in control? If he is in control, you do what the Lord says to do. But in the grand scheme of things, the old folks used to say, we'll understand it better by and by. Wow. Just just do it. I've learned to do it. It took me all of this time just to do my calling because I never fit. I never fit in. I'll be 50 this year. I'm proud to say that because I, I beat the lifetime expectancy of a black man in society. And I, and I praise God for, for beating that. But at the same time, it's taken me 30 years to resolve in the fact that I am who I am. God has given me, every time I, I gave up on, on doing music, you give me some more music. Come on, dog. Every time I, I, I give up on the song, you give me some more bars. Right. Every time I say I'm not going to, I'm not going to press, I, I made a I'm joke about, I'm too old, about, I'm too this, I'm I made too a that. joke about yeah. trap music the other day. And I, and I felt the Holy Spirit said, if I tell you to do trap, you better, you better <laughs> do trap. <laughs> but you, better you just told me, uh, you yeah. told me to get out the trap. It's it's just what, <laughs> but it's what I told myself, you know what I'm saying? We're not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the, to the body of Christ. There's, there's change, but there's really no change. You see, God is always up to something. He's the creator of all things. You know what I'm saying? But us adjusting is our, is, is we're willing to yield to obedience. Or not. It's our, it's our ability to sense His wave, His, right. his new wind, right. and then ride that wave, Absolutely. knowing that we are an evolving body of Christ. And I'm gonna be on God's side, dog. I, I, I've committed in my, in my life that I'm gonna, I've been through enough be drama to where I'm gonna be on God's side of things. You know what I'm saying? It may cause enmity between me and my mama, my daddy. I'm gonna be on God's side. My wife may not like it. Why are you going to the, the, her last thing she said to me? Okay. Probably shouldn't be out. She knows what I'm going through health wise. I gotta do what God said to do. He said, he, when God told me the top of this year, don't say no to nothing. Jesus. He told me the top of this year, don't say no to one thing. Yeah. Everything I give you away, you better have a yes. You have a yes. Yeah, so, see, if I'm sick or not, I gotta go. It's crazy to say that because at the top of this year, actually toward the end of last year, the top of this year, God told me to start saying no. Amen. We'll do that. And it's, it's so funny that you bring it up. I didn't think we'll it was going here, but what yeah. I'm saying is like, the point is you need to be in tune with God so that you can hear yeah. what he's saying. Right. See, I don't worry about coming to spaces like what we did last week right. because I told him, I prayed on it, and God said, go ahead and do it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't just jump into anything no more. I, Amen. I'm stretched very thin. You know, God, the word God gave me at the top of this year was margin. Devin, you're doing too much. Mm. You're doing too much. You can't be everything for everybody. I didn't call you to do that. And that and that includes ministry sometimes. Let's just oh, be honest. Let's, let's, let's be honest. If I like I serve faithfully in my community. I do ministry everywhere. I'm a teacher. We've been you, you know what it is. We yeah, minister yeah. at work to kids all day, all day long. It, it, I never turn talk, it off. Talk. Anytime I get an opportunity to give a young man or a young lady a word, if, if, if I'm listening to what God's saying, I'm in tune. So that's what I'm doing. So God told me. You got to settle down a little bit this year. So I, tur I turned down a lot of things. They asked me to do a couple things this year in this city. I said, no, nah, I can't do it. Hey ben, what is the benefit for a believer? I don't want to say Christian, obviously. What is the benefit for a creator that is a believer in Christ to have a life in it? How do, how do we benefit? I think we benefit because it comes a time when, I mean, all right, so I've said this to you before. Like, at my church, you know, praise God for living faith cathedral. Shout out to Bishop Gerald Gordon. Again, we don't have a youth problem in our church. Most yeah. of our churches, you think of it, though, if I'm being honest. Like, yeah. when you, if you come to our church on Sunday, we got two services. It'd be youth and young adults in there all sure. the time. Uh, my wife and I, shout out to Mrs. Burden, we were over the young adult department for quite some time. Now, I'm over the men, so I'm passing that to the young men underneath me. 
But I thank God that we've been able to cultivate an environment in you. So we do things for them. We have game nights, we go bowling, have a couple of lunches, we do stuff like that. The benefit is, while that motorcycle goes by, <laughs> the benefit is that they just have a space that's outside of the temple, outside of the sanctuary, that they can come and be themselves. A lot of times, and again, I have to reiterate, what happened at Life Club last week, last Sunday on Resurrection Sunday, was not like anything anti-Christ. It wasn't anti-God. It wasn't none of that. They was having a good Y'all time. It, you know what's funny? Like, like I said, I teach high school. You say you teach, you taught middle school at one point. The way these kids be cussing, it make me uncomfortable. Yeah. I, it make me feel old. The way yeah. they, you know, I, I probably... I don't know that I heard a single cuss word at Light Club, y'all. And, and that's crazy to me because all I hear is kids no cussing all the time. No rolling. <laughs> so what I'm saying, and these same kids who I see, but but again, there's a space for what what was done that yeah, night, right. just for them to come and be like, I oh, have folks cool. asking, are they gonna be bumping, grinding? Are they gonna be rolling? Are they gonna be? And I was, and I understand those questions because yeah. again, that's what they were used to. And that's what I'm so glad. That's what so they. Many that's what they think came about. Out. They yeah. needed to see. I know they were. Yeah. They needed to see. For sure. Can't is this a tool that the church can use? Can it be done? Can Christians dance? Well, dancing is biblical. Can we actually fellowship? Well, it's all biblical, right. but I, I realize, oh, they, we need to see it. Yeah. We need to see it. Yeah. I felt like for an artist, like the Spirit will give me a song. This is God gave it to me. I don't know if it's like I love it, but I don't know how they're gonna respond. And my church Ooh. is on Hollywood Boulevard next to five different clubs, right. and I don't, I don't get, to, we don't get the privilege of or the, the opportunity to test our workout. And just see. This okay, is about obedience. What he said earlier. I heard. I heard Pastor Mike Todd say, "I'm putting out so music, this year, so much music this year. I don't care if you don't like it, because it's about me being obedient wow. to the call that God put on my wow. life." At the end of the day, everybody's not gonna like everything you do. I learned that early. Ain't no thing. And I'm not just talking about music. I'm talking about anything. The yeah, choice yeah. you make, a pledge, whatever it is. Yeah. Somebody, if you ain't gotta look far for somebody to have a problem with something. Mm -hmm. Real sad. That's just is what it is. You know what I, 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 I love. I love the idea that a creative gets to gets to practice their craft outside of a clapping audience of the sanctuary. That's going to clap for you no matter what. It's like a comedian, like when I go to comedy shows, comedians test out their jokes before they do Netflix specials to see which ones is hit. And you know, if, if and I'm taking something back from the world, I know I need to, I want to be tip top shape. And in my, my mama Snodgrass don't clap no matter what I do. Cause she loved me, she loved my mama, she loved my family. But I want to know, Am I, can I, am I, what can I, like, I learned from you. I learned impact. your impact. I, I saw you when you got off the stage and got in the crowd. That's, you know, I'm, t I'm taking that. You know, I learned from Ashley watching her um, uh, flow in her anointing. You know, and all these things lets me perfect what God gave me to just be more impactful for Jesus Christ. So I, I felt like it was a great platform for creatives. I ain't got too much time. What is the benefit of a, of a light club for churches? How can churches benefit from endorsing? There was a lot of pastors that actually, to my surprise, a lot of pastors got behind, funded, and endorsed light club. I didn't have as much friction as I thought I was going to have. Um, why do you think that was, and what's the benefit for pastors who are wondering to be behind? And I'll, I'll give it a slug. I told the pastor, this is going to hit your city anyway. Like when COVID hit, it was, Rex said, COVID's coming to your city whether you like it or not. It's going to hit your city anyway. Don't support it. It's gonna hit, and you won't have influence on it. So we might as well get on the front end because it's definitely gonna hit. Because it's always gonna What's the benefit for our church? First of all, wherever there's ministry, there's always a need. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in the building, if you're outside. There's always a need. And so the beautiful thing about the life club is that some people need to go for fellowship. Some may need to go for salvation. Wow. Some may need to go because they need to run into somebody to pray for them. There's so many needs that can be fulfilled at a life club. And if we look at it that way, because there's some people that know the Lord. They're walking yeah. with God. But they needed to go because they've been feeling lonely. And so they went there and they got fellowship, right? There's somebody that was about to give up and commit suicide, but they went and somebody said, hey, I have seen you about that crazy. And they didn't commit suicide. There's some people that just um, had a rough week and they just wanted to dance. But they wasn't going to go to the club. Right. So they came to life club and they were able to dance. Right, so there's so many needs that are being fulfilled, and it could have been somebody rapping like Kingpin. 
first of all, you set it on fire. Come on, um, come on. Man. Come on. Somebody could have been rapping and said something, and that was a word that somebody needed to hear that planted a seed. But that's actually happened that night. This was like, yeah, it's it, not even prophetic. That actually happened. That actually, actually happened. happened. I saw, I saw, oh, really? I saw yeah. a pink pyramid. So my brother went on, yeah. and the young man, all of 22 oh. years old, came up to me. We were talking for like 45 minutes. My, look, my wife had to go pick up the kids. I was scared. Oh, I stayed behind. Yeah. I didn't want to go back to the house. Yeah. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't want to go back to the house. I didn't because before I got there, on the way there, I prayed, I said, Lord, Jeez. I don't know what to expect tonight, but if I can reach the one, I was here because of what yes. I was supposed to be here for. Literally, yeah. the one came up to me. I was <laughs> I was at the elevator, y'all. I'm telling y'all God worked. I was about to leave. I was waiting for my wife to pull back up and picking up our boys. And something happened. She, I called one, she didn't pick up. So the army hang and see what's going on. As soon as I walked away from the elevator, the young man approached me. That's around about the time you started. And I was like, man, I want to um, I want to see my brother perform because I know you're doing new music. Me and, me and bro work together a lot. And I was like, I was like, um, but I got to minister to this young man. And, 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 and I'm not going to sit here and act like I was ministering to him the whole time. He ministered to me, too. We was sharpening iron. It was a fellowship. If you if you a teacher, you know, if you ain't. Uh, if you ain't learning, you ain't growing. Yeah. So if I it's, I should be able to learn something from a 22-year-old and he learned that's something from so me, that's how it's reciprocated. Yeah. And that's really what happened Damn, that night. So the fact, well, everything you just said literally took place that night. Yeah. So Did I you see John it. Stratton bring that kid up? Oh, oh, man. Man. That young man <laughs> prayed for that man. He was off the street. Wow. Yeah, I gave him a free ticket to get in. Yeah, they were off the street. Yeah. Two people joined, two yeah. people joined <laughs> my church that night. Oh, um, oh. Salvation took place. Oh. I saw. I looked up at these. There was prayer pockets. All over, people were just in pockets, wow. in circles. Oh, I didn't plan that. It was it was prayer <laughs> pockets of people. Did you see that happening? I was sitting there going, "Oh my gosh!" I don't think you guys uh, understand. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get into it. I had a person tell me I was taking shots that night. I was drinking that night, and I didn't go to church that day. And I came because I saw it online. And I stopped. I, I stopped drinking to come. So it was like I had church because I didn't get to go to church for that. They ministered for about an hour. It was over. It was in the parking lot for another hour and a half. Literally, ministry took place in the in the in right here, and in the in the clout you guys had because y'all were the 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 the, 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 F, the the apex of the night gave the, the gave the authority almost to say I can speak into your life because you know what I do. I get down. So it was easy for the kids to go, you know. And I told the pastors, get behind these artists because they have the ear of your streets. Which is why we're touring to these churches tomorrow. Because, because we need you to capture these things. Because they see y'all doing what y'all do. Y'all gets down. Now you can talk to me because I respect what you I respect your music. Uh, you know what I'm saying? To just real quickly yeah. on that, like it's something that my bishop would always say to me. Like he, and he tells me this, even to this day he said, Kingpin, it's gonna be people that you can reach that I'm never gonna be able to reach. Right. He told now, me that. My bishop is one of the most charismatic men yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Like y'all yeah. y'all know Bishop Doris. He's one of the type of dudes, but he'll tell me like that, and it's somebody that you can reach that I'm never gonna be able to reach. It's the same thing in the streets. If if somebody was you're gonna you're gonna be able to talk to that gang member if you used to gang member. He was gang members in the club. Point blank period. Good. If you was in if you was in a strip club and you made it out of that, you're gonna be able to talk to a young stripper. She yeah. may not receive it from the the um, wh whoever the praise and worship leader is, but she might receive it from the young lady that was in that environment and came out. This is what I'm talking about. We got to stop demonizing people for going through. That's their testimony. Yeah. So because they got a testimony now, I can speak to it and I can speak to it confidently yeah. because I've been through it. It's certain things that I'm not going to speak on. I don't know nothing about that. But my brother over here, he, he really exactly. liked that. Yeah. And he dealt yeah, with that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I came from that. We have to be able to speak to that. So and I can speak confidently to anything I've been through. I'll share it. I, I don't withhold none of my testimony. Every, every, everybody who knows me probably know everything that I've been through. I was 350 pounds. I've been there. I know what that feels like. Yeah. Look, so now at 200 pounds, I can say I give God the glory. I give him the glory because I, I could have died. You said, you said something powerful earlier. You turned 50 this year. My father passed at 52. For a long time, I was thinking like, man, how much time do I really have left? I'm way more unhealthy than he was. My dad was a nice looking dude. So again, these thoughts go through our head, but now I have testimony. So wherever I go, I can share that with somebody because I lived it. So whatever testimony you've been through and you live, you can really give it to somebody. That's what we're here for. Literally, that's what we're here for. We had young people, <laughs> that's what we, we had young, I'm gonna we had young people wanted to be like y'all, yeah. asking their pastors, could they perform? at the next light club and bring their friends. Yeah. So we made a light club committee full of young people from every church. Wow. So they could, I was like, 
for us. Let me try to figure out what you want. Let me just, y'all just tell us what y'all want. It may not look like what they want it to look like. Y'all were their heroes. <laughs> Pastor Jason, I'm going to put my pastor on because my brother. He's like, man, honestly, John, I didn't know if I should jump move. I, I, I wasn't sure. But he was like, I'm in. And then he, 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 once he got up, Pastor Tina got up. You had pastors. Pastor Flip, Pastor uh, Manley got up. They were pastors dancing, electric sliding, and, and having a great time. Right. And I said, can you imagine what a young person is thinking about his pastor? I've never seen my pastor in this life. Oh my God, you, this is okay. You're, you're preaching a sermon just by jumping up and down. Almost more than you can preach from a pulpit. Because you're telling me where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And now, on Sunday, I've got to hear your sermon because right. you just gave my respect. Because yes. you just... Right. They, they went, what? Pastor, well, what's good? What you at Sunday? I'm trying to... We tend to right. overlook like the cool factor of kids. Yeah. That's a big deal with kids. Yeah. It's a big deal. I remember like, I, I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up on the pew. I came to, I always slept with my Bible under my pillow because that's what Brandon told me to do, but I wasn't reading it back then. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, just, yeah. I just did what she told me to do in that season, yeah. right? But all of that brought me back here. And I remember like, when I came to my church and I, and, um, you know, really started getting involved and stuff like that, and, you know, my bishop, his sons are like my little brothers. And I was like, man, I wish I would have known church was this cool coming up. Come on. Because I look at them, I'm like, Y'all fly, y'all speak well, y'all like everything, like y'all, y'all them dudes to be. In their high schools, they was them dudes to be. Point blank, period. Athletes did everything. But was Christian men and just had the had the nerve to say, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. That's not how I get in. I'm like, if I'd have known it was just cool to be in church, I would have been in church a long time ago. But again, unless you see it, you, gotta see you it. don't know. You, have to be you just don't know. Yeah. I thought church was corny coming up. I'm gonna be real with you. When yeah. I was a kid, I thought it was corny. I was only there on holidays because yeah. that's, you know, yeah. black folks, we gotta do better. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, Easter and Christmas and all of that yeah. stuff. But when I start really getting involved in ministry, when I start getting involved, and I was like, yo. I think y'all met, met, so met him at that level. Y'all met the youth at where they were. You came down from Ohio, you met them where they were, right where they were. You gave them something for them. So I said, change the name. I said, no, it's revival, light revival. You know, I said, I'm not making it for you. No, we're not doing it. I'm making it. Light revival. You, you, uh, light, light, uh, light praise, light. Yeah, it's right? like light and they gave me a praise, list of, yeah. Light, and I, mean, I was like, my age don't even know what the I, word revival means. I don't, I don't know. We're making it for them because the, they need the doctor. Yeah. Not the, so why would I cater it to you? The benefit is definitely there. Cool. The last thing I'll say is this. Um, you ask how the benefit pastors. Okay? Well, I'm a, um, I'm a man of God. There's man in there, then there's of God. Uh, and a lot of people have a hard time creating the distinction between the both until they see the man outside of the confines of the church. How would be the fish pastors it is? Pastors spend a great deal of time. Don't tell me y'all don't do it because I watch y'all online for a long time. Frustrating <laughs> seeing their young people in vicarious positions, criticizing posts, criticizing by how, they, how you dress, grieving in their spirit about what's happening to the next generation. Yeah. What I learned from my club is if you don't have an alternative, either create one or be quiet. That's good. That's good. That's if good. you don't have somewhere for the young people, they talk about Beyonce and everybody. When, when concert season is around, when Grammy season is around, I hear I see the, the barrage of pastors come out. I was one of the pastors that even came out talking about the wickedness in the music industry, this, this, and that. That's cool. But what are you going to provide? What you really, what I hear undertone wise, I hear a little envy. I hear a little jealousy because you don't have the same impact as some of these people. That's what I perceive spiritually. I'm not saying that, you know, it's, 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 it's really exuberant, but what I am saying is I see the hint of it. I see the little jealousy that you have. You want God to have that much impact. Well, what environment, the old model of having the church doors open all the time and having packing people in the church seven days a week is out. Okay. It's out. I grew up that way and I love church. I love church. But I grew up unbalanced spiritually and naturally because I grew up in church all my life. I didn't know how to act in the normal setting, in the corporate world, in the world. I had to, and everything I got, like you said, everything I got was from church. How to speak in front of people, how not to be afraid. So I did pretty well in life being out outdoors, but I still was unbalanced because I didn't go out into the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. That don't mean we hide behind church doors and let the world come to us. Yeah. 
we got to exist out here. Come on, so this culture. We got to exist gotta out here. We got to exist out here. Outside yes. that church. So you need an alternative. You're going to criticize what your young people is doing. I was at, last thing I'll say is this. I was at a football game. And I seen some of y'all young people, some of y'all praise dancers. And I was embarrassed that I knew their, their pastors because they was wild enough. And when they saw me and recognized me from church, they went harder while enough, as if to say, this is who I am, and you're not going to shame me for being who I am. They went a little bit harder, and it grieved my spirit. And I know that's what grieves pastors. I know it. I know, I know it tugs in your heart when you see this, and you walk into it, you see people at Walmart, and they being themselves. Yeah. But provide you some, somewhere safe in the nightclub. The best part of the nightclub for me was the ministry, was the atmosphere, that it was this man's son, Knowledge. Knowledge was on the front row. How old is knowledge? Ten. Ten years old. Oh, quoting word for word what his father was spitting. That's impact. That's impact. And if it can happen for knowledge, it can happen to other ten years old. Yes, and now the church yes, has a future. Yes, sir. It's not dying with the members that's in your assembly. It has if God tarries, the church holds on. And I want to, I just want to, on that note, I want to say we are not, because I know people will take this and look at it more yeah. more. Three minutes, I, y'all, we out. I stand by church. You need to yeah. be at a church. At a church. Yeah, you need to be at a church. church. Now, listen to me. I stand church. on that. Yep. Same. And the gospel Same. still works. We don't need to add no extras on it. This ain't extra. We're talking Same. about delivery. Right. That's what we're talking about. Right. 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 You don't got to reinvent the wheel. The Bible going to always say what it says. You know what Pastor Chris Johnson did? And he, and he donated to the event. He was from Grace Chapel. He said it's a, it's a parachurch tool. It's a, it's a bridge from the community into the church. That's how, he, that's how he, when he was counseling me, he said, John, present it as a bridge from here to there. And Pastor, so thank you, Pastor Chris, for your support. He may not be out there shaking his leg, doing his thing, but he supports uh, always. Last question for you, still, and we'll, we'll let y'all go home. We talked about the benefit for pastors. I think that pastors need to have artists in their tool belt because you guys are going to galvanize their youth. Especially if you're a pastor struggling with youth, you need to know these artists. Let them come into your ministry. They won't wreck it. Your youth will be inspired, and, and you can put people in those spots. We talked about the benefit for, um, what do we say, uh, churches, right? Because it's a, it's a para or a bridge for that young person who ain't never going to your church on Sunday. And you know we support churches because we all name our church on. But for that kid who ain't never coming, now they have a, a cell group. They, almost, they have a, a, a springboard into their church. Let's talk about the benefit for the young adults in your ministries. What is the benefit for young, young adult groups from different churches to begin to come together and create atmospheres like this? How would it, how would, how would it affect their faith long term? And I'll post a clip out there. We churches, pastors, we tend not to connect because we, we have a, we're not raised in a unified vision mentality. How will this benefit the next generation of ministers if we begin to begin to, if we begin to galvanize with different churches now? What impact would they have in Lancaster 10 years from the foundation? Their mindset in regards to ministry. I think uh, when I think about this, it's like, uh, again, I like to say things in front of So, like, you have an assembly, and then you have those kind of descriptions, and then you have places for people to come. So when you think about life going up there, you know, I remember one, one, you know, one time there was this place called the Water Hill. There was a coffee shop so there. There was going on. This is the Christian Hill going on there. Um, you, need, you need places for Christians to assemble. And, you know, and, and, and it could be in different formats. You know, uh, you know, David mentioned a couple of those earlier. And so when I think of, when I think of uh, something like life uh, and other things like that, and you have places outside of the assembly yeah. where, okay, on Friday, where am I going to go? Well, I'm going to go here to another kind of the music, I know it's, it's, you know, the people uh, that think like you, that love the Lord, and they're going to come in, and they don't know anything about it, and then they come in and, and experience it, and, and learn something, and ask questions, like, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, it's just, it's so, I mean, you, you got to have those links. I mean, and then, of course, if you're a Christian creative on top of that, you know, like it's, it, you know, yeah, you, it's cool. You know, I, I've been, I've been part of the club, I've been part of the bar, I've been part of the but it's all the dope, you know. So, 
So that needs to be there. So when you're looking at, at, at the youth, you know, that's, that's, that's what they're thinking of. I'm Friday, I'm Saturday, what am I going to do? You know, and so... So they have, exactly. And so those places, those places, those places, they have to be, they have to be available to them. And so if they go in there and they're experiencing this, they're kind of seeing it, uh, kind of on their terms, in a sense. And it's not to say that, you know, I was, I was going to say to them, I shout out to you, this is not to say that you can not grow in the next city or any other club here in my, in the outside of the church. They're not going to get it. They'll be in the pews and they'll sit there and they'll get it. You know, from the you know, 60, 70 year old the teacher yeah. going still in straight, you know, Bible belt, still fire and boots yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it, it works. You yeah. know, this is not in addition to this is not in replace of. Yes. In addition to it. Uh, and, nice. so, and so the so the youth, you know, when they when they get to any time, any time you have survived that. What's the long-term benefit of young adult groups from different churches coming together to build this social platform? First, it increases the shock factor. Um, so after a while, like that's something that becomes a norm, and that's what you want. You want them to know this is provided for you. You need this. This is open for you. And then also, it just allows our youth to be able to um, know more about things in the community, and it helps young adults be able to pass the baton because we're going to keep getting older and keep getting older. And now we have more tools and resources because we have ourselves gone to this and now we know what it's about. We told our youth about it and as they're the generations are going up, now it's becoming more of a norm yeah. versus something that has been shunned in society. Because they're just like you have a hospital for sick people, you have um, therapy for those who are going through issues and trauma, you have a store for food. That this is a need and the goal of this today is to draw those that are not safe and also form a place for people that are safe to be able to come and fellowship and things like that. So it's it's a need. And so if we look at it that way, the next generation will have something even bigger, more powerful, um, sure. even more momentous if we just embrace it. Check out the mentality. Ten church youth groups coming together doing something in the community. Five years from now, they're all ministers, right? Okay. Their mindsets are completely different from ours. They're already thinking unified vision. Right. They're thinking unified strategy. Because they already have experience and background and resume of doing things in the community together. Right. They know how to get the city to give them a grant. We reset the norm. Yeah, we versus our churches are, it's, you know how hard it is to get 10 pastors in one room? Because our, our norm was set, I was my normal. I only went to your church for praise a thaw night to out praise your choir, and then we went home. But we didn't build anything collectively in the community like the Muslims do or like the other faiths do, you know what I'm trying to like the Buddhists do. Now, 10 years from now, they're used to taking buildings, taking land as a unified ministry versus I'm scared of losing my member if I do that kind of thing. You know what, there's a lot of that, and I, I understand it. I understand that, this, that you brought that up. I understand it because I just, I'm just saying I understand it because yeah. church, while it's a place of fellowship for believers, church in itself, running the church is also a business. Yeah. It's also a business. Running the church. I'm not talking about church as a business. I'm talking about running the church. Yeah. You need to have some business actually. You need to know what's going on. Amen. So I understand. It's, it's not like appeasing your current crowd. It's you can't, like you say, you can't be afraid to be like, you know what, if we go a different direction, all these people gonna leave. You kinda gotta just be like, you know what, if God is doing a new thing, if he's really doing something new, I gotta trust that he's gonna replace that. Yeah. If that's what you're afraid of. You can't keep doing the same thing because you're afraid that them people that's been there for 10, 15, 20 years gonna stop paying tithes. I had somebody tell me that. I, can't, I couldn't bring you no, in. No, it's a real thing. The, the it's people that tithe, they're not gonna accept you. No, no, you, that's you a real thing. You want youth in your church. Somebody, listen, there's listen. gonna be a kingpin that's gonna come to your church. Hey, man. So if you can't bring this into your ministry, you're yeah. gonna push that out when so that there's gonna be, And there's gonna be... It might be a gap in between. Let's just be, let's just be real. We gotta start having some real conversations. <laughs> Ashley said something earlier. We all getting older and it's gonna be another you group of young adults coming in after us pastors you got to ask yourself if you had to hand your church to a young adult tomorrow oh how God. long would your ministry last wow. Ooh. Listen, Preach. 
I'm not talking about the gospel. The gospel is going to always do what yeah, it's supposed to do. I'm talking about your ministry. Your church. How long will your church last if tomorrow you had to hand it to a group of young adults? Because if it's not getting younger, it's getting older, which means it's headed towards a Point blank, period. That's good. It's headed Point towards blank, period. So but I get if that. If it's not yeah. getting younger, it's getting oh, older. It's and it's so if you're not instilling the value of church and loving God in your young people now, or or am I am I am I crucifying kingdom on the cross of culture? Do I need them to do it the way I did it, or can the kingdoms exist outside of my particular culture? I wore Stacey Adams in suits. Come on. Can the next generation wear jeans with holes, still preach the gospel because it's not what's on and them, it's what's in them? Jewelry. Or do I or do I need to have it? Am I trying to recreate the church I got saved in 25 years ago, and I'm imparting my culture on the next generation at the expense of the kingdom? Can we let them having those conversations I wanna, more about dress code? We gotta be having those conversations. We gotta shut this down. What I want to say is that, okay, say is that, okay, the word says God causes all things to work together for good yeah. for those that love the Lord and are called and are called according to His purpose. Yeah. All things working together for good, but the thing is that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Nice. If those things are the backbone, then God will cause all things Come on, right the, the the where you like are the the, 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 the music whatever it is <laughs> yeah. all yeah. things are going to work together yeah. so if you right. are involved in all those in so any of those things wow. and you are called according to his purpose and you love the lord and yes. you know what that looks like that's going to affect how this whole thing's going to look we got to wrap up these wonderful people got to go we're going to pray shout out to pastor stan collins i know he lost a loved one by the way we want to pray for him as well yeah. thank you to bishop hearns my, my covering my guide my father in the faith um who, who sits on the phone with me at nighttime and, and and jacks me up one side and down the other but gets me straight so i can do things and all the pastors that work with me behind the scenes that don't make your presence known apostle the wayne body bishop heller every all the pastors and, and bishops that that are that are speaking into my life to make sure I'm straight. I appreciate and thank you for the whole community coming out, all these artists coming out. Um, yo, yo, yo. Yo. Thank you, Pastor John Irvin, for the vision of Light Club and for Holy Renaissance. Thank wow. you, sir, for having me on. Thank yeah. you for giving me an opportunity to try some of this stuff out. Wow. You just, just have solace in knowing that your vision and your calling is working and it's reaching wow. heights and boundaries, man. I appreciate you, brother. Praise appreciate the Lord. You. Praise the Lord. God bless you, man. Yeah. Like, I just want to say, I was going to say, as the outside looking in, you guys are motivating other artists to go out and do it. From the messages I'm getting marketing-wise, it's like, oh, I didn't even know you could rap in the church. I didn't know you could do this and that. So you guys are That's literally motivating about. the community to get out and come to church or wow. uh, do their creative Woo! skills. Because if we don't show them, the only other option is the regular club. Right. So they're, they're, going not, so, they're, going they're not. They're not. They're not. They, they like they want to rap. They going somewhere. They just need a place to do it. <laughs> so you guys are showing them like, hey, they can do it here too. So motivation to all y'all. Go keep going. Real quick. Let me go viral real quick. Uh, if it can be a biker club, it can be a light club. If y'all can club for everything, I'm just Chess club. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We're you better have to go. Listen, some of these artists, we're going to be, be touring Jesus. churches right. in the Antelope Valley up into the next light club on uh, April, April 19th. 19th. Okay, so we're going to be in your churches singing and rapping and That's things cool. like that and blessing y'all on this little light club tour just to motivate your youth to stay back to God, back to church, yeah. back to purpose. Let's go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We um, we come to you humbly. We thank you. We praise your holy name. We say you are Abba. You are Father. You are creative. You are brilliant. You are smart. You are innovative. You are alive. You are cool. You are amazing, Father. I want to be like you, Lord. You are Woo! You're, you're, you're stunning with it, Father. And we just bless you to this music that's playing. We bless this light club and the artists and the churches that are attached to it. Thank you for the boldness to step out of the boat, walk on water, and pour new wine into new wine skins. I bind fear. I bind stagnation. You said we are the head and not the tail. We take our community back. We take clubs back. We take our youth back. We take influence back. We take authority back in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ will be the dominating force in creative expression in Jesus' name. There will be a holy revival, a holy renaissance in this land in Jesus' name. Pastor, stand, uh, bless my pastor, Father God, as he goes through the death of a family member, Father, that you would be with them and know that the whole community is with him in spirit, praying for him and lifting him up, that he is not alone and his pain is not invisible to us. We love him and in Jesus' name. And I'll let anybody else who wants to cover it, cover it. That's good. Amen. Amen. Light Club, April 19th. Later.